Hey y'all, welcome back to Pancakes and Pandemonium. So if you're new here, I'm Sarah. I'm a mom of five. Uh, three of my kids have autism. I homeschool three of my kids. So we're just a crazy busy household. And so I've had some health stuff over the years uh, with my kids who are special needs. Their IEPs and stuff like that are always due in December, which tends to make Vlogmas tricky. So I always go into Vlogmas with good intentions. I always know upfront that I probably cannot do 25 days of Vlogmas. And so we do what we can and we add an extra video. And this year I was right on track. And many of you will have noticed I did not vlog at all last week. So... I thought I'd jump on here, tell you why, tell you what the plan is. We have so many new viewers. I'm going to explain kind of the way I do Christmas and my Christmas videos so that you guys know what to expect, right? Because I think that's really important. So first, I want to apologize for not jumping on it all last week. I know I did some posts, so always check the community post, especially if my schedule is off at all because I try to update there. So we had an IEP for Alex last week and it was supposed to be Monday and you guys saw my last update. So we were just anticipating maybe having to be like, oh no, I really don't want his minutes lowered. We hadn't had any issues. So I did not anticipate any trouble at all. I thought this was gonna be quick and easy. And I, to be perfectly candid with you guys, right out of the get-go, uh, red flags. So they called me late, and I actually thought I was running late. Sasha. Oh, I'll be right back. Okay, I got interrupted. Uh, we had some people stop by, and then we had some other things to do. And again, I've was on the phone half the day. So I'm picking up where he left off. I didn't want his minutes lowered. You guys, listen, I th this could literally be an hours long video telling you everything from that point to today. It was an invalid IEP meeting. IEP meetings are done in person, at best a Zoom call. You don't do IEPs on a phone call. And it was kinda said and it's definitely suspected that th there weren't team members in the room, at least not all the appropriate team members. Um, it was very, very apparent. They were scrambling to get representatives in the room at the point I started pushing back. So that turned into an unproductive meeting. I had to get our parent advocate involved. And through it all, she actually found out they were pretty horrifically out of compliance. Uh, compliance is the law if you don't know much about SPED. IEPs are protected. They're protected documents. They're federally regulated documents. And being out of compliance can have all kinds of implications, including decreased or restricted funding from the, the federal government. Uh, so there's lots of reasons to be in compliance. Plus compliance protects these students, right? They have compliance and these things put in place to protect these kids. Because sadly, um, you have to know the law or you have to have somebody on your side that knows the law. The hoops you have to jump through to get them to follow basic laws um, from school to school, area to area, can be exhausting. I am the squeaky wheel. That's just how it is. Always have been. Uh, one day, when the time is right, and the situation calls for it, I will open up more about my history. I'm not there yet, but I can tell you this. I've always been the squeaky wheel. I don't know why I am just built that way. Uh, the more I am in a situation where most people want to shrink inward and are shamed into silence, 
I tend to be like, who can I talk to? Who can I tell? What can I do? What it, like, who will listen to this? It makes a lot of people uncomfortable, but it gets things done. And I fight for the right things. Kids and education, especially. So, anyway, we had a real IEP meeting. And it was bad. Really bad. My advocate, who has been doing her job for 20 years, was like, I don't understand what's going on. I don't, like, I am just appalled. I am behold appalled that this person and these people behave this way. I'm appalled that they came to the table with no proper information. And as in most things when dealing with special ed, especially extensive programs, it was a lot of like, well, you can figure it out. The big one was that they said, oh, they found out that the program Alex was interested in is mostly night classes. And half the classes are in different locations. So sorry, they can't help after all. So my advocate brought up another solution. And the assistant principal of Landmark that was there agreed that it was a great solution. The district representative that was there was like, yeah, we could do that. But just so you know, uh, I can't guarantee he'll get college credit. So then, you know, I had a lot of concerns about that and I couldn't make decisions right away. And ultimately it was like, well, you have to research it. Of course I do. And guys, I have no problem researching or looking into things. Uh, it's just problematic when they support these programs, they tout these programs, they sell kids on these programs, and then they're like, oh, they're separate from us. We don't know anything. Sorry, you figure it out. Like, what are we doing here? So, guys, it has been meetings and phone calls and then surprise phone calls, surprise text messages. You know, kind of like, um, hey, call me, kind of text messages, uh, which did lead to a tour and a meeting at the ALC, the Advanced Learning Center, um, which is a district-led support. Uh, they do a lot of concurrent enrollment stuff. Uh, the person in charge of it was a file holder of the boys early on when we moved here. Is very familiar with both Ryan and Alex, our situation, our story, who they are, what's been going on. And she was like, she heard the story not from me. She heard the situation or parts of it. I don't know who reached out to her. But she was like, we can fix this. I want him here. I think he's going to do well here. Obviously, it's up to you. Uh, but I can help him if you're here. And I know he's in the right hands of people that can help him if you're here. You guys, this is, I mean, that kind of has come to fruition the last couple days. It has literally been more than a week of this stuff. <laughs> it's exhausting. Um, and I say a lot, especially when you're new here, as much as I love you and I love this channel and I love this as work and I want it to be a job and I want it to be real work. First and foremost, I'm a mama. That's my most important job. And occasionally, especially with special needs kids, just things come up and I can't do it all. So real quick, thank you for your patience with me last week. I know I promised you three videos a week um, through this week. And I'll explain the end at the end. I'll explain the rest at the end. But um, I just couldn't. I couldn't swing it. I mean, just meetings and conversations and phone conversations and hours long conversations 
emails, just all the things. Like, I mean, I don't know how so many moms have jobs and careers with special needs kids. Because for me, it is the equivalent of several jobs. Like, it, when things like this happen, especially, it consumes my time, which of course consumes my energy, right? I couldn't make dinner half of last week, which, thank heavens, I stopped my pantry and my freezer, right? <laughs> That's a real bonus in these situations. <laughs> But, like, that's what it is. I had migraines from crying. I, you know, it's it's a real thing. So, back to today. We toured this facility. Oh, my gosh. It is the coolest thing I have ever seen. Alex was more excited than he was for MTech. He kept grinning, and you know, he's got this like cool little like smirky grin when he's excited. And started talking and started talking excitedly and started chiming in in conversations. Always a good sign with him. They made his schedule on the spot once I told him I loved it. And I truly, genuinely think this is going to be a good fit. He's only there till May. This is concurrent enrollment. This is high school adjacent. He officially graduates in May. But they're going to help us move on and find the right fit for him. Tech school, trade school, whatever it is, beyond their point. And he'll graduate with 12 credits. Um, the other thing we were told today is that we do not have to pay for it. Um, this is being taken care of by the school and by the district. And then I received notification that the director, so you typically have your superintendent and then you have your individual areas in a school district and each area has a director. So they're directly under the superintendent to give you an idea. She has gotten wind of this situation. Originally, I was going to email either the person right under her or two down from her, pretty high up there. Um, that is who it had been discussed with my advocate that I would email and reach out to. And he's supposed to be really great and really into creating change in the way parents have to deal with the district and schools, right? Uh, the idea that parents are not supposed to have to fight for basic rights and basic deserved and entitled services for their kids. Like, we're just going to do the right thing. Very refreshing. Very great. Somebody you want higher up. You want lots of those people, ideally, in a district and in schools. But I, I digress. Um, so that was who I was going to email. And the director of this department wanted to hear from me directly. So after other explanations and phone calls today got wrapped up, um, I spent hours, probably close to four hours, you guys, um, writing that email. I actually sent it off to my advocate, who I feel like is a friend, to be fair. I adore her. Um, I sent it off to her, which she had told me when I wrote the email, sent it to her. She would proofread. She would check it. I let her know they were expecting it soon. So I'm hoping to get it back so I can make any tweaks necessary. But it's a long letter. Hopefully it's a compelling letter. And hopefully, like, whatever is needed to be done gets done. Now let me be clear. I'm not asking for anyone to lose their job. I don't work that way. I don't think that's my place anyway. I, I, no. Um, what I can do and what I have done is ask for retraining in these areas, especially in discourse and in IEPs, and ask for accountability in if they're going to be at high schools 
and alternative high schools and stuff and share these programs and tell kids and parents that, um, hey, we can do this and we can transport you and we might even pay for it or have resources or whatever to pay for it to know, to know what they're talking about, right? To have, you know, a more than basic understanding and to be able to, like, and to not go into meetings and be like, oh, oops, I don't know anything, not my problem, which is what happened, right? And so, you know, so we did that. Uh, frankly, I'm not one to demand an apology. In my younger years, I was spicier and would be like, you owe me an apology. And here's the truth. I don't want a coerced apology. I don't want to demand an apology. That's not a real apology. I only want an apology if someone means it. I do want change. This has to get better. This has this has to get better for families and especially for these kids. We should be raising productive citizens. And frankly, I'm so tired of using the word fight. Why do I have to fight for basic rights for my kid? And I know we aren't the only category or subgroup of people that feel that way. A lot of people in the United States of America are unfairly fighting for basic rights. And we just have to do better. This, uh, this one's my fight. And I hate so much that it's a fight. It just doesn't feel like it should be a fight. Why are we fighting? Why are we fighting for things that are already law? Things that are already in the books? Things that are already... Like, this isn't new. This isn't experimental. This isn't different. Like, what are we doing? It's, it's, it, this is stupid. Let's do what the kids need. And yes, that also includes paying teachers better. That is absolutely a part of this fight and something that should be advocated for. We have teachers leaving, fleeing this profession. It's not okay. They should be supported. And for the amount of work they do, they should be paid well. And this should be a competitive job. We have to do better across the board. So I want to make sure you know I'm acknowledging that. But I'm a mom. My fight's my kid. I can advocate. I can throw that in there. I can acknowledge it. My fight's my kid. That's where my focus is. That's where my concern is. That's where my worry is. So but I do want to clarify. I do think that is a very important part of this whole picture. So there's that. So guys, it has been a long freaking week. Videos didn't go up and I am filming this on Wednesday. So I'm behind. Is it Wednesday? Hold on real quick. No, it is Tuesday night late. It's almost Wednesday. Told you it was a long week. Actually, this is going on week two. Like, this is a lot. So, I love you. Thank you for your patience. We are getting this fixed. Like I said, it just, sometimes it just takes so much work and energy. And then there's nothing else I can do, right? A couple of nights were such long phone calls. I barely talked to my other kids just a couple nights, but I mean, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. So we're picking back up. We have this video, which is going up. I have a Trader Joe's haul. I have a little tiny vlog, uh, from when we took the kids to this cute little local place. I couldn't film in the place 
is it's a really small vlog. And at the time that I'm filming this, I may toss it and do something else. I guess, I guess we'll find out together <laughs> what I choose. But we will be putting three videos up this week before we break for Christmas. Typically, I only work up until the kids break for school. That's the 21st. So I'm seeing, I'm either gonna put up that other video or film another one, but we're gonna get as much as we can up and scheduled. There'll be three videos. And then we will put up a Christmas video towards the end of the week after Christmas. And then we really, we put up our Christmas video, we put up our Christmas Eve, sometimes we put up a Christmas Eve video. Um, I always put up a video with just some footage of our morning, the stuff being set out, clips that I get that I would take anyway. Cause you know, I'm sending stuff to family in Texas, my mom and my sister, and you know, we're taking videos. Um, so I, I am taking video anyway, but I'm not obsessively filming because it's really important to me to be in those moments. Does that make sense? Uh, but I always, I always put up some type of Christmas video and I try to photograph like the food and the trees set up the night before and when Santa comes and all of those really great moments you know and you know and then like I said put in clips and videos of reactions and just you know fun and it's just a fun feel-good movie and so many of you after our first year vlogging asked for video of the kids maybe our second year vlogging last year might have been our first Christmas video but I know I had received messages asking saying, oh, we really miss seeing a Christmas video of the kids. We would have loved to see the kids. And it's just, just such a heartwarming support. So I want to give you something and I'll see how Christmas Eve goes. Christmas Eve is shaping up to be a little chaotic, <laughs> but in a good way. <laughs> so, um, and I have nothing wrapped, nothing. Okay, no, that's not true. I have a present game games like presents wrapped so this is going to be an adventure <laughs> so you know what you guys will see on christmas eve when i see how it all works out <laughs> and yeah maybe i'll film some of the wrapping maybe i'll be wrapping everything on christmas eve and that's what i'll film for you guys i don't know We'll see how it goes. There'll be at least a Christmas video. I'm rambling because it's been a long week and I'm tired and I miss filming for you and I miss seeing you and I miss talking to you. And you guys are my creative outlet. You're my outlet. You really are. I love you. I am so grateful to you and I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your love and your support and your patience and your prayers and your good vibes and all the good you send our way. We love you. I love this vlog. I love this community that we are building. So thank you guys. At the time I'm recording this, we have 894 subscribers. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you for finding me. Thank you for sticking with me and thank you for caring. So do me a favor, like this video. And if you're just finding us, subscribe. And I have playlists and tons of great content and tons of great videos. So subscribe and come back for more pancakes and pandemonium. I will see you real soon. <laughs>